Oh boy, now Tulsa has a Costco, and it doesn't get any better than those $1.50 dogs. So to start this week's Explore Tulsa, we take the drive down Memorial in style. Then the place to pum 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 Followed by a friend to cuddle up to. Plus, putting new skills to the test. Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. It's so nice to see you back with us for this week's Explore Tulsa. Now, Stevie, have you put any thought into buying a new car this year? Are you kidding me? Every time I get into my car, people stop and take notice. Mm, that's because the squeal your fan belt makes sounds like you're torturing cats. That gives it character. Besides, I wouldn't buy a new car. I'd buy a classic. Ooh, you'd probably be able to find a really sweet one at Tim and Tracy Kirk's place, House of Cars and Cycles. Whenever I was five years old, um, I unfortunately lost my father uh, and my mother remarried and the gentleman that she remarried was, you know, it was back in the muscle car era and he was an avid drag race fan and he introduced me to Mopars and GTOs and 68 and 70 Camaros and just all that cool stuff and it just got in my blood and I'm 49 years old today and it's never got out. In my background, I you know ran dealerships 25 years, so I've got a huge customer base of my own, and I just always wanted to kind of have my own dealership. And you know, prices have gotten so high for a, a normal guy to buy a Ford dealership or something like that. You start looking outside the box, and what could I do to you know have success? So I've always had a niche for finding just hard to find unique items and a lot of my customers they are four or five car families so they're always saying hey Tim I got a Porsche or I got this F-150 truck or I've got a Corvette so I thought you know what I could if I could have an indoor showroom and you know, maybe I could uh, have people you know bring me some of their cars sometimes sell on consignment so we do a few consignment sales and you know I'm always looking around on the internet finding stuff. Yeah, it's a 56 Chevy. It's got a 375 horse crate motor in it, but it's got a 700R four-speed automatic transmission with a shift kit in it. But you can drive that car 70 miles an hour at 2,000 RPMs, just purring along, and that's what we wanted. My wife's dad's car is a 65 Buick Riviera. Um, the movie Roadhouse made that car popular again. It was the only year model where it has a clamshell headlight, um, but it's got a uh, 420 horse V8 motor in it. Used to take my wife to school in that car. In preschool, she's four years old. She's 48 today, so that car is uh, very special. It's a keepsake for my wife and, and her family and a great memory of her dad and the success he had in the auto business in Tulsa. Corvette's a 62 model Corvette, so it, it's a very nice, clean car. It's got a 350 Chevy motor in it, uh, but it's a car that, I mean, you can get in that thing and go to a Corvette club meeting in Oklahoma City or, you know, take your wife on a weekend trip if you want to run down to Fayetteville or somewhere like that, or a lot of people like going to Eureka Springs. You know, you can take a car like that and have fun, and it's a very roadworthy car. That car is a Factor 5, um, they call it a reproduction car. That car, what I love about it, it's got a 427 Ford motor in it. So, I mean, it definitely has the performance. It's got a manual transmission in it, definitely a head turner. I mean, if you're driving in, into Quick Trip to put gas in it, you'll have three cars that will follow you in. You mind if I take some selfies, tell me about that car? It's one of those cars that it gets attention from everybody. There's a kid here in town named Danny Aslick that my wife and I support. His, you know, we're supporters of his racing career, and but he uh, won his first Daytona 200, uh, which is the most sought-after race. You know, it's kind of like winning the Daytona 500 in NASCAR. That's what all the motorcycle racers want to win is the Daytona 200. He won at Danny Aslick in 2014, and then he was one of the only riders back-to-back -back that won it again in 2015. He won on a Triumph, so Triumph wanted to come out with an extra, you know, kind of a special bike. So they came out with a commemorative edition. Danny Essley sent it to the race shop in California, put the race tune in it, the exhaust like he ran on his race bike, even down to the handle grips that he likes to ride with. They built 47 of them worldwide, and all the dealers and museums, people like that, suck him up. So he had a favor, you know, by them doing this that he could get for a family member or friend. And, he thought enough of my wife and I that he helped get us one. 
I always laugh about, you know, saying we're going to have a man cave at Grand Lake and it's going to be full of things we've acquired and that's what we hope to do one day. I tell you what, I sure looked good in that Cobra with the 427. Yep, you could definitely be in the remake of the Gumball Rally. So if you'd like to take a look at Stevie's favorite for yourself or any of the other cars and cycles, visit houseofcarsandcycles.com. I tell you what, Trish, a car like that and if I could do something cool, like if I were a drummer in a band, that would be, I'd be set. Well, you know where to find the car. So how about next we stop in at a really nice place to find a great set of drums. A drum shop on Lewis. Yep, that's our next step when we come back from more Explore Tulsa. Our most beautiful 4K HDR TV. Easily manage your cables for even a clean rear look. It hangs flat on the wall, just like a piece of art. Yet, its slimness creates astounding images. Experience new discoveries with Android TV by getting instant access to everything you need. Introducing the latest Sony 4K HDR TV. Hey, I'm Kendall Osborne from the Closet Studios and you're watching Explore Tulsa. Hello again. If you're a drummer or have ever thought about being one, then you'll be so glad you stuck around for more Explore Tulsa. <laughs> that reminds me of one of my favorite drummer jokes. I can't believe I'm saying this, but go ahead. Let's hear it. Kid tells his mom when he grows up, he wants to be a drummer. And what does she say? Well, honey, you can't do both. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you're savvy enough drummer to not only play in a band, but also to open up your own drum shop. But I've been fortunate where I've been able to make a living playing music. I just can't read a note of it. it looks like a giant Rorschach test. It's a mess. Uh, I got introduced to drums the record would probably say five years old, but it's a little hazy, so I don't know for sure. I was with my mother. Uh, we were living in Florida at the time, and uh, I got to see some great bands, and I heard my first drum solo. And from that point on, it was, there was, there was really nothing else. I mean, oh my gosh, a, uh, Alice Cooper. I saw the original Welcome to My Nightmare tour. Not the remake, I'm talking the one in, way back when, ELO, they had a giant spaceship. I saw Boston, I saw the cars. I saw Rush side stage for 2112, which is how I got introduced to Rush. I've seen them all. I was lucky that I was going to live shows a lot, and there was a point where I was seeing about four concerts a week, so I was side stage a lot. And I got a snare drum was my first one, but I had sticks before that. And it was air drumming, it was beating on the sofa, it was beating on the ground and cutting out cardboard. and Just anything that I could do to create my own drum set until I could have one. And, uh, started taking lessons, I was summarily kicked out, um, primarily because I just didn't want to read the music. And I still can't to this day. I liken our job to being both the den mother and the psychiatrist of the band. In, in a band setting, there's always one person that has to manage all the different egos and all the different emotions and stability of the other members, and that usually falls on the drummer. Looking at all the drummers have passed, they all had their own command of the stage in their own different way. But more importantly was how they communicated with their audience. How they communicated tremendously within the music and the context of the music. Some drummers want a very loud, very boisterous, very big sound. Uh, they would choose drums that have that same characteristic. Uh, oak, babinga, much harder woods that have a lot of voice and a lot of character within them. Not subtle drums. Uh, you may have jazz players that may play kits like these that are much smaller, that are a little bit more pitch friendly, where they can tune them up higher to get to the back of the room with less effort. Doing a drum store was the only thing that made sense as far as music instrument retail. Uh, I've worked for a couple major manufacturers or major retailers, uh, both here and elsewhere, but I know drums the best and I don't care to know anything about the other stuff so there's no point in me putting it on the shelf. Uh, we have a couple of vendors that have asked, well, why don't you carry guitar items? Why don't you carry some of these things? I don't know them. 
Why am I gonna try and sell something that I don't know? Because if I have those items, there's gonna be that guy that goes, hey man, you got this part for this whiz bang doohickey? I don't even know what that is. Uh, there's gear that's available now that five years ago would have been twice the price. And you would have never seen it in other levels of technology until you stepped up to that price point. Uh, there's new technology in terms of how drums are made, what efforts being made to increase their productivity in the manufacturing side of it while maintaining that quality. And that's stuff that's way beyond my scope of understanding. Those guys are much smarter than me. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I'm supposed to, this is my job as a servant. I want to help drummers be better. I want them to be better for themselves. I want to help them create the voices and the sounds that they want to express. Not that I dictate that they should express. That's not my business. I want to help them. I want them to grow as, as players, much as humans. And the only way that I can do that is to do things the way that I see fit, and that's doing it from the ground up. My story is here. I made my home here in Tulsa. This is who I'm supposed to be supporting first. I can't, I have to treat it like I would any type of tour when I was in a band. Local. People need to know me here. Then I'll branch out a couple miles and I'll introduce myself to more people. There's just a lot to do here first. As the father of a drummer, I think the best thing they ever invented is those electric drum sets that have headsets for the drummer to practice with. For the drum kit perfect for you, visit drumshoptulsa.com or stop in for their 4 p.m. tea any day they're open at their shop on Lewis. I wonder if I could find any good books on drummers. Mm, well, a good place to start is a close by place to the drum shop, also on Lewis. You'll find the frugal bookworm. So let's jump on the reading train and stop in to meet Karen and Eli next when Explore Tulsa continues. John Erling with Voices of Oklahoma. Our great state has been home to countless individuals whose place in history has been earned through each of their many accomplishments. Voices of Oklahoma's mission is to preserve their story in an oral history presentation like none other. Accounts direct from famous Oklahomans, political figures, and many others who have left their indelible mark on the development, history, and future of Oklahoma. So please, treat yourself by listening to those who are the Voices of Oklahoma. Look at us. We woke up one morning with every song that ever mattered to anyone. So now what? Music's meant to be heard, out loud, where your life happens, where you dance, where you love, and where you live. When everyone has every song ever written, what matters most is how you listen. Come here for yourself at Video Revolution. Hey, this is Daniel Gulick, local artist in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you're watching Explore Tulsa. Hey, you're just in time for a reading on Explore Tulsa. As his detached gaze swept over her, Amelia knew exactly what he was seeing. A woman dressed in serviceable clothes and practical shoes. She was fair-skinned and dark-haired. With a rose cheek wholesomeness, her figure was sturdy and voluptuous. Uh, let me stop you right there. You expect us all to believe that you, sit around and read romance novels? Well, yeah, especially when they come from the frugal bookworm. Karen and Eli do know their stuff when it comes to all types of books. Yes, they do. So let's go visit them while I find out if Amelia is about to get her first kiss. I've always lost myself in books um, since before I can remember. Well, it's a way to explore different relationships, different locations, different perspectives, uh, everything from science fiction to poetry, uh, from Mark Twain to Fifty Shades of Grey stories. You know, there's such a variety and so many options for people to try and experience and explore. Um, it gives you a chance to be kind of the ultimate armchair traveler. I was uh, I have a psychology major uh, and a computer science degree, and I worked as a systems designer and software developer for 25 years. Um, and then just the rat race got more than I wanted to deal with, and I've always loved books, so my husband helped me invest in a small bookstore. We started uh, with 1,500 square feet here in this shopping center, and we've uh, upgraded and moved and enlarged every three to five years since. 
that's one of the things that's fun about visiting the bookstore is it's like visiting a lot of old friends. There's, there are thousands of books in this store that I've read and then I help get other people excited about reading them. I approach this job as a customer. I approach it as a reader because I've been reading on my own for fun since I was in elementary school. And so since we don't push memberships, we don't push discount cards, I'm free as a manager and employee to engage our customers on that personal level. Like there's no seller's agenda. And so I have a lot of regular customers and I know them by first name and I know what they like and I know what they might like. And so coming from that direction, I can do things that are fun, like having you know the sale boxes or the fact that I get advanced reader copies, I can give them away for free and allow people to try something new without having to invest any money into it. Or the blind date book basket is just something fun. You know, like I put a little bit of a summary on the front and they can decide if they want to take a chance on it. And so I like being able to be a little bit adventurous in what I do. One of the things we do is we try to really know our merchandise. Um, if you ask Eli at the front counter, do we have this book or that book? She can tell you within minutes, um, everything's in order by author and by section and by title. Um, we try to make it very organized. Um, there are other bookstores that find it fun to just pile books around and let you wander through them forever. My OCD won't let me do that. We have to be organized and help you find what you need um, as quickly as possible. The, the world out there is moving pretty fast and most people don't really have the time to um, wander around for several hours looking for something that they might need or want. That's why we group them by section. So if you're a thriller person or a romance person, you know where to go and then by author and title. So if you're reading a particular series or you're reading a particular author, you can find them quickly and easily. Probably our biggest sellers are our romance novels. Uh, the thing that defines a romance novel is that it always ends with a happily ever after. Um, and most people prefer that in their uh, reading, in their uh, entertainment reading because they have enough stress, they have enough reality in their personal lives. This gives them a chance to escape and, and travel a different path with, for once, a guarantee that it's all gonna turn out okay. Every day of doing it is something I enjoy. So how many people can say that about their lives? We had a rainy day this week and I told somebody it's my favorite thing to do. You know, there's nothing better than spending a rainy day with a thousand of your closest friends. I love the way Karen and Eli know so much about the books that they carry, making it easy to help folks find what's fun to read. They even have a great comedy section too. To learn more about how to find books you'll love, visit thefrugalbookworm.com. The only thing I don't like about books is it starts to remind me about studying in school. Well, CB, a lot has changed with school since you last went. <laughs> Today, places like Tulsa Tech are offering more hands-on learning. Willing to have an open mind and see how kids are learning today as we head out to the Tulsa Tech Jinx Campus next with more Explore Tulsa. Hey, it's Stevie from Explore Tulsa with my friend and optometrist for many years, Dr. Robert Zellner. Tell everybody why it's so good to come in to see you. <laughs> well, that's a great question. Let's see, we've got two great locations. We try to stay cutting edge at every point along the way because let's face it, everybody wants to come in and get taken care of in a timely fashion and get the latest, greatest stuff and save some money and get on with their life. And, and, see, and see clearly. And if you don't believe it, look on the website. Absolutely, drzellner.com. You can find that we have our two locations at 69th and Memorial and 30, 3030 South Harvard, or you can give us a call at 749-2020 or 461-2020. And I got four kids, and I gotta tell you, as a big family like that, it's affordable too. Oh yes, and of course, the number one reason, you save some money. I mean, with our two pair specials, with our uh, different unique packages that we put together, I mean, you can come in here and your money can go a lot farther than anywhere else. And that's why with Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates, Seeing is believing. Oh, I like that, yeah. Stevie. Well done. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob from Aqua Music Group. Hi, I'm Majda from the Max Petro Pub. And I'm Lynn, and we're here talking about 80s prom, the 14th annual at Kane's Ballroom. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Explore, Explore Tulsa. Tulsa. <laughs> 
Hey there, thanks for stopping by to join Trish and I for more Explore Tulsa. Now Stevie, when did you know you wanted to work in TV? Ever since I was in high school, but I didn't even get to touch any of the equipment until my junior year in college. Well today, that's not the case. With new technology and video needed for virtually every business, kids today can get started as early as high school by being a part of Tulsa Tech. Within the skills, this event, is I've seen more enthusiasm probably than anything all year. So I think it's really kind of cool, it's competition. So nine years ago today, they started a TV production class here at Tulsa Tech, and I've been here the whole time. The, the first semester, they kind of started out on just the basic how to shoot stuff, how to use nonlinear editors. Um, we start from you know the ground up, and I think they get excited the more they do it, as long as they go through it. Um, by the time they get in the second semester, they're doing studio work. It's more of like a teamwork you know effort, like they're putting on basically a 10-minute newscast weekly. They're all given you know producer roles, some are given director roles, some are given photog roles. They can learn all the basics in the first year and now in the second year come back and really hone their skills as a shooter, an editor, and a storyteller. Even whenever I went to college it was more kind of, you know, you assume that you go to college, you get your degree, and you get, you know, you basically go into that field as a job. I think now it's becoming, especially millennials, it's becoming more of you don't necessarily have to have a degree, you know, you have a, have a skill set. Students are starting to really get jobs in the field locally and far. Um, in the beginning, I think the program really I gave them a head start more for college, but I don't really know what has shifted here in Tulsa, but something has definitely shifted, and they're coming to me more and more looking for production, you know, entry-level positions. But then that's what I think what's great about Tulsa Tech is they're given a skill set. They're basically going outside the classroom and they can get jobs. We've even had people in my class, in a couple classes, where we've gotten jobs at Fox 23 where I work. So we're starting from the ground up and getting the job right away and it's kind of been rewarding in that regard. What you're seeing today is Skills USA, um, which is a part of the career tech system. It's a very large organization. I think nationally there are about 380, something like that, um, thousand members. Um, so it's huge. The contest that's going on behind me is called TV Video. They put together a 30 second commercial. We, I took them to the aquarium. Um, and then the TV Video contest, they only had two hours to shoot and then they had three hours to edit. You know, everybody loves a little friendly competition, so I think that adds the element to it too for what they've done in the classroom as well. And then there's another contest I think you saw called Digital Cinema, and it's a short film. We are given a prompt and we're given 14 hours to shoot and edit based on the prompt. Since there's two of, only two of us, one would have to be the actor and one would have to be cameraman, so I was the cameraman. I was mostly the photographer. We have to shoot, edit, log the footage. Kind of be open-minded and patient with one another in case we mess up and stuff like that. We did have some challenges. Um, I think the biggest part was trying to figure out what we were going to do because there were so many topics we could do. We kind of just took our time, get it right, fix it, whatever the problem was, and moved on. Our project is about um, knowing better and that something, you take the good with the bad. So um, in certain scenarios, uh, things come along that you think are bad, but in reality they help you in the long run. And that's kind of what our video is about, um, just finding hope in little things. It was actually really exciting to see all these other people working totally different projects than us with the same prompt. Um, and in this short period of time, like these people are coming up with all these crazy ideas. I mean, I think there was nine teams just in the adult sector of it, and everyone was just doing completely different stuff, and I think that was the most exciting part. I love movies. Um, movies are a way to escape from reality, and I, I really love that. You know, from all the hard work that everybody does, you watch a movie and you're somewhere else. I kind of think back in my mind, you know, the basically the point that I was at whenever I was their age, you know, adults and, you know, high schoolers, high schoolers, but also even adults are in their you know early 20s and like I couldn't even fathom thinking that I could do something like that, you know, um, because they were they're a lot farther along than I was at that point. So yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. They're so far beyond where I was when I was their age. Um, you know, I believe that my role is really just sort of an advisor, you know, to, to give them the tools, give them the basics and then just kind of steer them in the right direction. And, and what they come back with, some of those students, it just blows me away. I would have loved to have been in that class when I was in high school. And the Skill USA contest is the coolest. It's never too late, Stevie, because now Tulsa Tech offers adult classes too. 
To find out how you can participate, visit TulsaTech.edu. We need to start working on our project for next year's Skill USA contest. Hmm, why don't we make a TV show? What a great idea! How should we start it? While Stevie figures out that we already do a real TV show, stick around. There's more Explore Tulsa just ahead. Like parents have a thing, when it gets too quiet in the home, we're worried, you know what I mean? I don't like silence in the home because it, it just feels dead. Silence, that just doesn't feel like a creative place to me. Turning on music in your house is almost like turning on the lights in your house. Music makes mundane stuff better. And it's never too late to discover new things. You just never know what song's gonna come on next. <laughs> Silence is probably the enemy of a happy home. Come here for yourself at Video Revolution. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 clients to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa's best. And our drive to at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner & Associates. Have you outgrown your home entertainment system? Then it's time to step up with Video Revolution and Sony for the ultimate 4K home theater experience. Size does matter when it comes to the quality and enjoyment that you get from a home entertainment system. Engineered by the experts at Video Revolution on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Be sure and join us next week when we learn all about the great work being done by the Rotary Medical Supplies Network. Special thanks to Tim and Tracy Kirk for showing us the classic cars and cycles at House of Cars and Cycles. Thanks too to Roger Nottestead for sharing his story of becoming a drummer and opening up the drum shop. And thanks to Karen Bustle for taking us through a tour of the Frugal Bookworm. Also thanks to Teresa Piper and the kids participating in the Skills USA competition at Tulsa Tech. Remember, if you miss any of the show, you can always catch us at ExploreTulsa.com. As always, each week we feature the people, places, and attractions that make us proud to call Tulsa our home. And hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Share with us someone you think Tulsa should know more about. Plus remember, Explore Tulsa is brought to you by Video Revolution, located on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Stop by, say hello to Ron and all the guys for all of your home entertainment needs. And Explore Tulsa is also proudly brought to you by Dr. Robert Zollner and Associates. Home of the two-pair deal starting at just $99 with two locations, 3030 South Harvard and 69th and Memorial. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this week's show, but we'll see you next week right here on Explore Tulsa.